to as well, Father God. Lord, Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you. We ask all the trust you. Amen. Thank you. Holy name. Amen. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Settle down some. <laughs> we need you to sing this song with us. Listen up. Listen up. Out of creation, there at the start, for the beginning of time.
And the tenth chapter. A word that is used many times in the scriptures to invoke blessing, speak blessing, is the word peace. Peace be to you. Peace to you. Peace be to you. And the word peace is bigger than sometimes we've understood in our English language. The Hebrew word shalom, the, the words that are used in the Greek, they encompass a lot. That's why I kept saying prosperity when I'm speaking over the, the little ones. Because when he said peace be to you, it, it included the idea, yes, of being protected and, and, and being safe, uh, but all, and being calm, and being at rest. But it also includes the idea of no lack. And no want. Why? Because if you're, if you're hungry and you can't pay your bills, what's it do to your peace? Right? right? You know? But uh, how can you be totally happy and at peace? And, and uh, you're satisfied. Every need is met. Every bill is paid. And so the idea of abundance and plenty and safety... And good relations, prosperity, success. One definition is nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. Amen. Well, that would make you sit back and go, ah. <laughs> yes, sir. Man. Uh, one of the definitions is to be well with or to be well off. Everybody knows Amen. well off sounds like prosperity. Right? For it to be well with you, well with your soul, well with your house, well with your business, well with your kids and grandkids and great grandkids, well with your mind, it's well with me. All that's summed up in that one word, peace, in the English. And in Luke 10, Jesus gave his disciples a charge. I believe it applies to us. In Luke 10 and 5, what did he say? Jesus said, talking to his disciples, into whatever house you enter, you say something. What do you say? Peace. peace. The word B is in italics, but uh, it is implied. Peace to this house. Now what did he tell them to do? He told them to say something. When they come, because he's sending them out to minister. And he said, wherever you go and wherever you wind up staying, whoever you wind up staying with, of course, they didn't have all the hotels and stuff that they have today. And even as recently as the 50s and 60s, you know, preachers usually stayed in somebody's home. Still today you have some of that. But uh, He said, when you come in, if somebody's letting you stay in their house, and you come in, they are extending respect and kindness to the Lord by receiving His, aren't they? And He said, I, this is, I want you to do something. I mean, oh, the Lord is not a taker. And boy, you do something for Him, you cannot give Him. He, he's going to bless you. And He said, you say this, peace to this house. Now read the next verse, verse 6. And if the Son of Peace... <laughs> What does that mean, a son of peace? It would be somebody who is open to it. Somebody who would receive peace. Who would believe it. If the son of peace be there, you hear this next phrase? Whose peace? Your peace shall rest 
upon it. This is not empty words echoing through somebody's house. If somebody respects it and believes it and will receive it, when you say peace to this house, tangible peace will come in and rest on that house and everybody in it. Amen. Jesus told them to do this, didn't he? I don't think we've taken this seriously enough. I think it's kind of been lost. Well, Jesus hasn't changed. Right? And if not, if, if what not? If, if it's not a son of peace, if it's not somebody that respects it or believes it or receives it, then it won't rest on them. It'll turn to you again. What does that mean? It'll come back on you. It'll stay with you. Is this peace real? It is. And it's not just so you can be calm and serene. What does this peace include? We've already talked about it. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. It is to be well with you and yours, to be well off, to prosper, to succeed. It's blessing. And it's all so much blessing summed up in one word. Peace. When Jesus is raised from the dead and he shows up, what did he say to him? First thing he said to him, peace. Peace. You know, it become popular for people to hold up signs and say, peace. And, and today, I guess the hip-hop version is peace out. And, which means nothing. Somebody trying to be cool, whatever that is. And I'm just giving you that as an example of how empty words have become. When you and I are supposed to be walking into places and under the right circumstances say peace to this house. And if people believe it, something happens. Another level of peace. Not to say they didn't have any. But see, what if somebody's smart and they meet you in the door and go, we have some peace, thank you very much. <laughs> We're not heathen in here. This is a safe house. Well, smart Alex missed blessings. <laughs> if somebody, now again, the less is blessed of the greater. So this is not just to be done haphazardly and randomly. But if somebody that has a place in your life comes in and says, peace on this, on this house, on this family, what do you say? Are you a son of peace? Yes, sir. Then what do you say? You, it's time for you to throw up your hands and close your eyes and say, I receive it. I receive it on me and my kids. What? Peace and increase. Prosperity and plenty. The power to cause us to become greater. And if you do, it happens. How many know Jesus wouldn't tell us to do something? Tell them, tell us to do something. It's just an empty dead ritual and Nothing to no. The, the, this is real. This is real. Do you believe it? in the scripture in the New Testament? We see this kind of thing numerous places in the epistles. Paul said, "Peace be to the brethren." First Peter, he said, "Grace to you and peace be multiplied." Third John, "Peace be to you." Now see, we've we've read that so much till we think they're saying howdy, hi y'all, peace, bro. <laughs> That's because our words have been so powerless and empty. We haven't realized they were doing what Jesus told them to do, even in a letter. I don't know if you know this or not, but for years, all my letters start out the same way. Grace and peace to you and yours. And I'm not just saying howdy. I'm releasing my faith. <laughs> And I'm believing when people open up that envelope and they unfold that and they read it, whether they read it silently or they read it uh, out loud, that the peace of God comes in. Amen. And grace comes on. What? And they're just sitting there reading that letter. Uh, and, and, and after that, and the days after that, that power is working in their life, the presence of God, to cause them and theirs to become greater. Amen. And if they believe it, 
And if they respect it, it will. And if they don't, my peace and blessing will come back on. And the same with you. I know we haven't walked in these things. A lot of people haven't like they should. Some of it sounds strange and foreign. But I'm reading the New Testament. Huh? I'm reading the words of Jesus. He's never changed. It's, it's, it's the organized church that has gotten away from it. It's preachers that quit preaching it and quit practicing it. This is the devil don't want us blessing each other. Does he? He wants to keep us confused and in the curse. But the Lord would minister to us through us. I said he'd minister to us through us. Do you believe it? How many think we ought to act on that word? Peace be to you. In, in Psalm 122, a lot of people are familiar with talking about praying for the peace of Jerusalem. And in verse 7, here is part of the prayer, Psalm 122, 7. Peace be within your walls. And what else? Prosperity. I told you they go together. Within your palaces. Verse 8. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say what? I'll say what? Peace. Peace be within you. In closing, I think, go to your place in Ephesians where you were holding <coughs> earlier so you don't miss out on this great, great verse. Ephesians 4. You are called to blessing and you and I are called to bless. Say it out loud, I'm not a cursor. I'm not a dammer. I'm a blesser. I'm blessed. I'm called to blessing. And I bless. Amen. Isaac blessed his boys. Uh, Joseph blessed. You and I are to bless. Listen to me, parents. You don't have to wait till you hear uh, a, an audible voice or you have some kind of spectacular experience before the Lord. How did these men do this? They did it by faith. And there are times you'll be with your kids and your grandkids or you'll be with your spouse or, or some of your family. Don't be presumptuous. The, the, the less is blessed of the greater. But if you have the place and it comes up in your heart, be bold. Be strong. Look at your boy. Look at your girl. Take them by the hand. Say something over them. Are y'all with me? Do it by faith. You, uh, back uh, nearly 30 years ago now, I had just getting started in the ministry. And my grandmother was a great influence in my life for the Lord. Sister Lena Pearl Moore, Secretary and Treasurer of the Cherry Chapel Pentecostal Church. And uh, God uh, used her tremendously. She taught generations of children in the Sunday school. And, and uh, I, I saw grown men come to her house and kneel down by her chair and ask her to pray for them when they're trying to get, you know, get back to God. And, great influence. Influence in my life. And uh, I knew she was nearing the end of her uh, time and we were in school and Bible school and some things. And I began to see about this. And I thought, man, this is important. And I came home and we, we went up and visited and, and I said, Mama, would you lay hands on me and bless me? And she said, yeah, honey, I will. She laid hands on me, little, little, little hands, she's old. And she starts a praying and crying. Glory to God. I'm telling you, the presence of God came on me. And about the only thing she said to me was, Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. If you're saying something as a knee jerk after somebody sneezed, God bless you. It doesn't mean a thing. And it won't affect or change anything. But old friend, 
when somebody in faith, somebody say in faith, in faith, in faith, who believes in it and releases power, what did Jesus say when you said peace on this house? He said it'll come. It'll come. Peace will come and settle on that house. I believe the words of Jesus. Do you? This is real. This is not imaginary. This is not psychological. It's not just mental or emotional. It's not just getting worked up. This is real. And this peace is not just something to make you feel good and enjoy. This is power to make you more than you were. Glory to God. This is power in the presence of God to cause you to become greater than what you've been. I got a picture in my office <coughs> right next to my desk of me and Phyllis standing in front of Brother Kenneth Hagin and Miss Aretha as they laid hands on us. Special day to me and spoke blessing over our life. I know, I know, after that time, I had something I didn't have before. It wasn't, it, it wasn't all manifest, complete, but, it, but it was there, and it just kept getting stronger year after year after year. Why? Because when people of faith speak words of faith to people of faith who receive them, mighty things happen. Mighty things happen. Increase comes that makes greater. Can you say glory to God? Ephesians 4. Let's close with this, I think. Ephesians 4 and 29. What did he say? Let no, how much? None. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Now corrupt is the idea of rotten. Like a banana that's rotted or a piece of fruit or something. Which another uh, definition is worthless words. And another one is hurtful words. Let no worthless, bad, rotten, hurtful words, communication proceed out of your mouth. But what should be coming out of your mouth? That which is good to the use of edifying. Edifying means building up. That it may do what? Inform people? Give them some information? No, no. This is, this is far beyond information. That it may, the, the, what you're saying actually ministers grace to the hearers. Every time I get up to speak, including right now, I'm not just pleading for something to come out that people can make a note about. And tap your, th your head and go, hmm, that's an interesting thought. I believe when Jesus spoke, it was life. Do you? I believe people that sat and heard him speak, they didn't know a fraction of what was going on with their heads, but words of life were coming right into their spirit, cause enabling them to be something that they had not been. And I believe every church and every ministry and every man and every woman of God that speaks the Word of God under the anointing of God, by the call of God, that life is supposed to be flowing in those words. Strength is supposed to be ministering something real that's beyond your mind. Everybody say, minister to us. This is not just for preachers. He's talking to everybody when he says, don't let any corrupt, bad communication come out of your mouth. But what? That which is good. Somebody say that which is good. <laughs> that which is good. The Weeks translation says, Let every word that's rotten and unfit for use out of your mouth, let it not be proceeding. But whatever is good and suitable for education. Ed education. That's not the right word. Edification. <laughs> With respect to the need in order that it may impart grace to the hearers. The new century says, when you talk, do not say harmful things. 
but say what people need. Words that will help others become stronger. Don't you like that? Then what you say, are, are you reading that? What you say will do, will what? What you say, what you're saying will do good to those who listen to you. Our words are not just informing, they're doing something. They're doing something. They're doing something. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes you need to put your, your arm around your child. Look them in the eye and tell them, you will overcome this. You will beat this. You will learn this. You will be able to do this. And this is not just a pep talk. Everybody awake. This is not just a pep talk. You're releasing faith. And if you release faith, these words will minister grace. How many know God's grace is sufficient? With enough grace, you can do anything. With enough grace, you can overcome anything. With enough grace... You can receive and be and do anything. And words coming out of our mouths can minister this amazing grace to others who will receive. Peace be to you. Be blessed. Be strong. Be encouraged. Be bright in your mind. Be quick in your thinking. In your soul, be at rest. Be at peace. Peace be on you and your children and your grandchildren and in your house and in your car and in your place of business. The very peace of God that passes understanding. Keep your heart and mind in Jesus Christ. And the favor of the Lord be, I told you you're not too old to be blessed. Come on now. The little ones had their turn. Now it's yours right now. In your life, everything you put your hand to, the favor of the Lord be on you. And the grace of the Lord be on you and in you and with you. And your way be prospered before you and prepared before you in Jesus' name. And be increased and become more. Be enlarged and become greater in this year, 2011. Be increased, be enlarged, become greater, become more than you've been to the glory of God in Jesus' name. Somebody say thank you, Lord. Stand on your feet, everybody. Next to the guy next to you, the closest to somebody. We're going to lay hands and we're going to speak blessings. Amen? Come on, Matt. I'm going to shout it. Just, uh, you, know, you know your brother, man. Just uh, let the Lord lead you. Just speak the word of God. You know, speak the peace of God, speak the love of God, speak the grace of God. Lift them up. They might even have a request. They might even have a request. Let's pray. Let's pray for our brothers. Come on. My brother. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for my brother right now. Lift them up. Lift them up. Lift them up.
get ready to cry out with the guys we got left. Frank, we're going to Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the blessing today after the hunger to be with us this morning. Go about our day. God, let it be a lot. It is our place and our blessing in this hour. Father, keep us safe as we go. Father, just continue to work you through our lives. Amen. What? <laughs>